So the new Master Properties feature in Adobe After Effects can completely change the way you work with compositions. Let's take a closer look at how to use this new feature. This project is not very complex, and I did that on purpose for this tutorial because I want to show you these new features without the distraction of a really complex project. But once you learn how to use this new tool, it is really, really useful for complex projects. The first thing we want to do is talk about the project that I got going on here. I'm working on a little web series where we interview artists, and the producer wants to have this little intro title in a couple of different variations. It's a very simple intro title that just says the artist, and he wants to change the color. He wants to make a few different versions, and he just wants to change the color of the background element, and he wants the animation to change ever so slightly. For instance, very basic animation where it comes in from the top or comes in from the bottom. So we're gonna create four different versions and show you how we can use this new workflow to make it a little bit easier. This little project contains a, a few elements here. We have our title, or our text title here, and then our background element and then our interview clip. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this interview clip. The first thing we wanna do is isolate our properties that we want to change for each version. So we can do that in the Essential Graphics panel. This allows us to isolate properties and then reuse them as master properties. So the first thing we can do is select a composition. I'm gonna select our intro title composition and then I'm gonna rename this intro title. And now to see the properties that are supported, I can just click this solo supported properties and it's going to automatically open all the properties up that'll work in the essential graphics panel because unfortunately right now all properties do not work but uh, just just a few they've added a, a lot of new properties that are supported and um, so there's a lot you can work with so as I said before I want to use uh, I want to change the color of the background here so here's the fill color of the background I'm going to drag that over here and let's also grab maybe the size or let, let's see here we want to change the scale and or let's do scale and position of the actual rectangle so if we want to change that because we're going to want to animate that okay so these are our background properties here and i could add a quick comment drag this up and call these um, background properties Okay, now I'll go back and I'll close everything here. Okay, now let's create a couple of new versions here of this graphic. To do that, I'm gonna grab this master comp here and nest it in a new composition. And I'll go ahead and rename this here. I'm gonna rename it red. This will be our red version. Now if I open up the nested comp, I can see a section for master properties. And if I open this up, it's gonna essentially show us everything that's in our properties that we isolated here. And the cool thing is we can keyframe these. So I can start to edit these for this version. I'll change it to red and I'll make a quick basic animation here. It animates in. And let's say we want it to scale, let's see, zero, X, Y, and then we want it to come in maybe from the top a little. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, that's fine. Down and dirty, no. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm not going to get too, you know, too crazy here. So now I'm going to look back and see that we still have our original uh, graphic here. There's no animation applied to this, but the blue color. So now we have a different version here. I can go ahead and make another one. I can grab this. This is our master one here. I can drag this in, and now we'll make a green version. Rename this green. Open it up, we can see our master properties here. Change it to green. And now maybe do something slightly different to where this one comes in, you know, and just in a slightly different animation style here. Let's say this one animates on the x-axis, or axes, and then goes this way, just something down dirty and quick, maybe even further than that. Okay. And we have our green, we have our red, and now, what other color can we make here? Go down to our master properties for this version. Uh, we could do a yellow one, kind of a yellow. I'm gonna rename this. Now again, this new workflow is gonna help keep everything interconnected so we can make some easy changes, and it's gonna avoid us, avoid, uh, prevent us from duplicating a lot of layers or having to take a lot of steps that we can kind of avoid. 
Like if we want to change one thing, it'll automatically change, you know, those same things. Let's have this one come in from zero on both the X and Y, see how this looks. Okay, this one kind of scales up, maybe comes in from the top. I don't know. Okay, so now we have four different versions here, different colors with different, slightly different animation styles. Now let me show you the versatility in this new workflow. So over here, next to all of our master properties in our parent comps, you can see these two symbols next to each property. This is the pull from master comp and the push to master comp. And that does pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Now let me show you why you would ever want to do that. Let's say we had edited this, um, you know, we edited this version here, this green version, and we didn't like it. We wanted to start over from scratch. Well, we could just simply pull the property information from the master comp and then just start from scratch. Let's say we didn't like this animation. Well, I can pull this from the master comp and pull this from the master comp, which essentially is no animation, but it'll, it'll automatically adjust it to what our master comp is set at. And we lost that animation, but we're keeping the other properties here. So now I could quickly go back and create a new animation that is slightly different. Kind of redo it now. Let's go this to zero and this will go down. Okay, so we've quickly created a new animation. Now let's say that uh, our client came back and was looking at our yellow or no, our red and said, wow, that animation is really cool. I want to use that animation for all of them. I don't want to have different animation styles for every version. I want to I want to use this anim this exact animation style for all the versions. So now if I had simply duplicated these and and kind of done each one, now I'd have to go back and change each individual one. But since they're all connected to this master comp, we can quickly change this. And just to keep everything not as confusing, I'm going to rename this blue one master. Now to apply this animation property to all the versions, I simply need to push these two properties back to my master comp. So now when I go back to the master, I'm going to see that now this is animating exactly how this was. And now to make this automatically go back to all these versions, I could go pull them, I could go pull the information, or I can simply, if I know I don't want to change them anymore, I can delete these properties from my central graphics panel. It's going to retain that animation style, and then all of my versions are going to have that same animation style. Very, very cool. And now let's say that the client wanted to change the text a little bit. He wants to make it bold. So I can go to the master and I can just quickly grab this, go to character and then change it to bold. And that's automatically, since they're all linked, it's going to update all these. But now let's say he wants to, our client wants to make adjustments individually. For each individual version, he wants to change the text position. So now I can go back solo these properties here and let me just grab the text position. So I can grab the text position here. I can drag this in. I'm going to go ahead and delete this comment. And this is text position, so I'm going to rename this text position. Oops, text position here, text position. And now that's going to update since I added this, it's going to update in all the master properties. So now I can go in here, and now in my master properties, I can see text position with its own individual properties in each one. So now I can automatically edit those individually. Another cool thing that's just like the last version of Adobe After Effects is I can export this as a motion graphics template, which I can use directly in Premiere Pro and make all of these editable attributes inside of Premiere Pro, which is very cool. Okay, I hope this tutorial did a good job of explaining this new feature. It's very cool. You really need to play around with it a little bit and you know test it out before you can grasp really the possibilities of this. It might not seem very powerful, but once you start playing around, you can see the, the, the versatility of this new workflow. Again, this is a really great workflow because it allows you to solo only the properties that are most important to you. You can kind of cut through that clutter and you don't have to go searching for those properties. Everything's right here and now everything's connected as, as much as you want it to be and you can push and pull from your master comp and it's just a really intuitive and really good workflow. Let me know what you think about this new feature. Are you going to use it? Do you like it? I'd love to hear your thoughts and I'd love to see how you use this in your workflows. Be sure to check out my other tutorials. I've got a lot of videos on the other new features in the latest version of Adobe Creative Cloud and I'll see you next time.